Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Boozer here. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the infusion for Thor ongoing right now. We're going to go over his fusion plan and I'm going to make it my goal. Every one of these fusion plans, of course, to make sure that you guys are well informed and you guys have the best chance of finishing Thor fusion. Um, this fusion plan for Thor is a little bit different since he is a hybrid fusion, mainly because you have to collect fragments, build up the epics and use Thor. Keep in mind that you have to do it with a lot of time here. You can't save him like fragment fusions, for example. Um, but yeah, in this video, we're going to go over the fusion plan. I'm going to tell you guys all the tips and tricks that I know. All right, guys. So here is the fusion plan available right away. Uh, at the start of the fusion, we have uh, 450 fragments available. We need 400 to fuse four of the void epics. And then, of course, we use them into Thor. So there's an extra 50 fragments up for grabs right here. Um, but they are part of a third summoning event. Um, so, you know, honestly, this is not surprising. Um, this has happened in one way or another um, for all of the hybrid style fusions. Um, our man's, for example, had a hero's path instead of a summon rush. Uh, in this case, we have Summon Rush. Um, and it's been completely the case uh, since forever. I'll show you guys some uh, visuals in a second here. Let's jump over to day one. So today is day one. We're going to start with the Spider Tournament here with the Artifact Enhancement and Champion Training. It's not the best day one. Usually you want Dungeon Divers to start with Dungeons, obviously. The best thing about Spider paired with um, Champion Training is that you can actually use Eric's. Eric's can solo Spider hard. And you can farm for food with her, which is great. Fusions, they're not turn attack. So you can definitely use solo farming strategies um, to um, double dip uh, with champion training. The dungeon diver uh, won't start until tomorrow. So save most of your energy for tomorrow uh, while doing spider. Uh, for today, you can do some champion training, for example. You can work on your brews, work on the tavern stuff. Um, but yeah, use only... For Free energy resources for the spider and then we start off with the champion chase here so champion chase it's going to be a 2x sacred so i mentioned in my other video that sacred shards are only worth about 280 champion chase points um, during the champion chase even in a boosted scenario so they're not worth a lot and you're going to need a lot to fit in chase so i'll pull up the visual here um, so this is a champion chase for incarnate and armands both of which they have the pieces for the epic at about 3,000 points. So if we're going to use, you know, 280 points per sacred shard, you're looking at over 10 sacred shards during the championship. Complete um, the fragment requirement. Um, that's very expensive unless you're sitting on a lot of sacreds and you're really interested in a 2x event. I probably wouldn't go uh, that route. Um, you can see here that during the same fusion for Arnett, uh, during the summon rush, the epic piece was only worth 3,000 summon rush points, which is, which is the equivalent of six sacred shards. So during a champion chase, if you can do this champion chase without using sacred shards, would be the best. So for me, for example, um, I have, maybe you guys saved your Loki. I've saved my Loki until the champion chase, so I'm going to do that. And obviously, I have broad maws I can fuse. I can pull uh, summoning portals. I can pull my remnant guys. Um, I can I can pull the summon pool epic. You know, it's usually going to be epics, but I can pull the summon pool guy. That's going to bring me up pretty close. And then I believe you can also um, use one of the void epics during the champion chase if you're pretty quick on some of the elements. So you can finish the spider. Artifact enhancement, training, and then dungeon dive, and then use one epic as well. So that's a lot of free points without actually pulling any shards. So for me, uh, I think the champion chase is just kind of like an easy do for me personally. And I think most people have an easier time doing champion chase just because, you know, points come from many places and you can prep for them outside of just holding on to shards. Your other option is to entirely skip the champion chase in the beginning since um, this extra summon rush does allow you to skip two uh, different events. 
you can completely skip the champion chase and focus on rush. this actually is kind of okay that summon rush the second one is actually so far out near the end of the fusion because it gives you more time right so it gives you like the fifth until gives you the fifth until the 13th it gives you almost two weeks of saving shards to try to complete two summon rushes at for example right so ultimately it really depends what kind of resource you have if you're sitting on you know what i'm sitting on which is like loki fragments remnants prism poles you know all these kind of like non-shard related points maybe the champion chase is worth doing for you um i don't i don't um I mean, you know, I'm not against doing the champion chase and then having a wait and see approach. Um, the really crappy part is that the second summon rush is at the end. So if you plan to do it, you're kind of hooped into doing it. Um, and if you do everything up until it, um, you can at least skip it at the end. If you're all set up until the end, you can at least skip it. Um, so there's some options here on how to navigate this. Ultimately, it depends on what kind of resources you have. If your main goal is just to complete Thor and not care about any of these events, obviously, if you have the resources for Champion Chase, definitely just get out of the way. Don't wait until the summon rushes, especially if you're, you know, kind of tight on resources because Chase and Summon Rush, they require different things. So as we can clearly see, the Sacred Shards for the Champion Chase is potentially like much, much worse in terms of overall um, efficiency so you really want to save sacred shards for summon rush and not use it for the champion chase if you can help it i'll show you guys some more visuals on these uh, um, examples from the past but basically we have here so for example like i said the summon rush from the same incarnate fusion was worth six sacred shards three thousand points here I dug up the old Emic fusion back in August 2023. And this is the layout for the secret summon rush uh, where they offer you 50 fragments. In this case, you can kind of see here the Isabel character. The second piece came at 5,500. That's 11 sacreds. And you get two, um, two you know, different sets of the fragments. So you get 50 of them. So for 11 sacred shards during the special summon rush, you get 50. Whereas you could spend 11 sacred shards for this champion chase and only get 25 if this is 3000. So you can kind of see here what I mean by resource efficiency. So basically you could spend literally double the amount of sacreds and get half of what you're supposed to get in terms of going towards this fusion right also keep in mind that this champion chase i'm using a value of 3000 which is the latest you know the latest values from the armands and the arnett fusion but during the emic fusion the champion chase was 3650 so it's not a given that this will be 3000 uh, for this champion chase it might even be 3650 so i strongly encourage you guys to take a hard look at this champion chase tomorrow and really decide what kind of resources you can spend on it if you need to spend sacred shards on this champion chase i highly recommend you guys do not spend sacred shards for this champion chase i want to say that again i highly recommend you guys do not spend sacred shards yes during a 2x event for this champion chase if you need to use sacred shard i would skip the champion chase and focus on the summon rushes in two weeks all right, that's like, you know, a big seven or eight minute talk about being careful about these champion chase and then these summon rushes. They're actually, the summon rushes, I don't think are that bad. They give us options, right? To be honest, depending on what resources we have. Anyways, let's move on a little bit here. So the spider tournament is going to take about 2.5K energy. And ideally you want to commit that energy during the dungeon diver, which will probably take approximately 5,000 to 55 um k energy so you're gonna put 2.5k energy from spider into the dungeon diver and then when dragon opens unfortunately you're probably gonna have to open you're probably gonna have to put the whole 2.5k energy from dragon tournament right into the dungeon diver and then any kind of residual energy you're gonna have to finish off the dungeon diver with 
um maybe would campaign for example during the champion training champion training is not too bad for dragon as well since there are a lot of you know, solo options so it's not too bad for overlap you could triple dip as well with the dragon tournament training and the dungeon diver if you have for example uh theodore theodore can do dragon you know theodore can do dragon hard eight solo with four food uh currently i'm using um Staltus and uh, Artak for a hard 10 with three food. So it's, you know, there's ways to triple dip here with the dragon. So it's not super bad. After that, right in the middle here, we have, I believe this is going to be uh, CVC. I believe this is going to be CVC and it should be a non personal reward CVC. Um, and there is kind of like a floating dungeon diver here again, 5.5k energy roughly. Um, you know, player is going to put three of these into every fusion, of course. And, you know, since it's kind of floating, you have options. And what a great time to, you know, probably throw energy into the event dungeon. So since we just can throw energy into it, into any dungeon, the event dungeon seems pretty good. Um, so that's probably what I will be doing. Just putting my energy into that. And that's probably, probably going to be like 2.5k energy kind of like floating up to you your choice and then once the fire knight opens probably going to put 2.5 energy into the into the uh dungeon divers here to connect that and then we have the summon rush opening on that weekend and then lastly you're going to have this third dungeon diver paired with ice golem so the entirety of the ice golem 2.5k will go into this uh you could even do 5k here um and then the rest of it rest of the extra 3k energy probably be training or residual fire knight or you can put it all into ice golem or you can put it into the event dungeon as well so the givens here of course we have the artifact takedown uh, sorry the arena takedown two of them that's a given those are must do's and very easy artifact enhancement we have three of them if this has been you know kind of normal part of the course uh for every fusion for a long time now so three of them each of them cost you about 20 million silver usually you recoup most of that silver just by doing the events by farming and selling your gear of course make sure you save any kind of gear rolling for these events only of course since we have most of the 2x events uh, for shard boost happening this weekend i don't expect any 2x events for next weekend during the summon rushes so that kind of works right because um you know obviously a 2x boost really helps champion chase not so much summon rushes um so that's you know fine the other thing that doesn't really work out super well is um usually it's nicer to have a champion chase near the end during one of these hybrid fusions because you can fuse up all the epics for points in this case the champion chase is at the front so we don't have too much time to fuse up the epics um so that's kind of makes me think that this front loaded champion chase would be on the cheaper side and not expensive um such as what happened with the emic fusion at 3650 uh, because the emic fusion um, they it was at the end the champion chase was at, at the end and then i think plarium was catching on that people were saving the epics and all that stuff so then they made it a little bit more expensive so for me personally the first week here is pretty straightforward you even have opportunity for triple dipping the dragon tournament champion training and dungeon diver depending on your roster and gear of course um, the middle part during cvc is going to be interesting obviously your energy is probably going to go into whatever your dungeon of choice to try to finish off this dungeon divers um and then the last week is you know obviously probably the hardest part and really um you know gives you the questions of what you want to do the, do i want to skip two events right if you skip the champion chase in the beginning which other event will you skip personally the dungeon diver is super good value to skip if uh if i have to say so myself it's just a ton of energy um obviously skipping the summon rush is obviously very good as well so this is actually a very good point where you could absolutely skip this champion chase and this summon rush and just focus squarely on this one summon rush 
it's actually it's a gamble right because we don't know what is in this final summon rush at the end of the thor fusion um it's a big gamble but from like i said the visual that i showed you guys um from before this is emic right this is emic's um secret summon rush and it was you know it costs you 5500 for 50 pieces and that's only 11 sacred shards worth of shards keep in mind that is over two weeks away from today which gives you over two weeks of stacking up sacred shards or building up sacred shards or whatever so personally i think this might be the most viable strategy because obviously player is going to play off of our fear of failing the fusion if this summon rush is really bad so therefore we will complete every single event leading up to the final summon rush um, and not leave it up to chance and i totally get it right if you don't want to leave it to chance i totally get it um complete every event and then skip the last summon rush here it is 50 extra by the way um but it might be worthwhile to think about doing this if you're in a position like myself um, where I'm sitting on 57 sacred shards and sacred shards to me, you know, if I don't, if I need to spend like, it, even if it's not 11, if I need to spend like 15, you know, 15 sacred shards, um, to complete the two events, it's probably not too out of the question for me, to be honest. Um, but 15 is a pretty big jump from, from 11 here. So I probably expect it to be maybe like 12, but yeah, ultimately it depends on what kind of resources you have yourself. Uh, quick note here, Ice Golem with Champion Training. If you have Artac, Artac's really good as a solo option, uh, since you can do hard Ice Golem, still farm food. And then just one more comment about the shard stuff. Keep in mind that somewhere along the line, there's probably going to be a deck of fate for Freya. If you guys are interested or in the hunt for Freya, um, and you know my guess is that it will be shard heated there will be a shard component followed by a secondary component maybe like a training component or soul stone something um so it's something to consider um that because usually sacred shards are really strong for deck of fate events points and efficiency and of course sacred shards are going to be really strong for summon rushes um unfortunately you can kind of see here this summon rush ends just as this opens so it is a gamble it is a gamble to wait for this last summon rush but i think for me personally i'm gonna go for this one um because i feel like having the double pieces double fragments um in one event usually means it's cheaper right usually you know you, when you buy bulk right you buy you buy bulk it's going to be cheaper at least that's my mentality um i mean you know player M definitely can throw a curveball there but yeah, guys, that's going to be it for the video. Hopefully I showed you guys some evidence from past fusions. Hopefully it gives you guys a little bit more info on to make, how to make some educated decisions for yourself and your own account. Every account is going to be different. So you guys are going to have to manage it yourselves um, based on whatever resources you have. And obviously the biggest resource is time. If you have no time, the, these fusions are really, really tough. Um, so I def definitely recommend you guys take a moment, have a look at the plan, see what's viable for yourself uh go at it i mean thor is going to be an insane champion just from our brief play testing of him i play tested him quite a bit and uh you know he's he's the real deal he's the real deal guys uh so definitely one that you don't want to miss if you can help it um but yeah this this event looks not too bad the fusion not doesn't look too bad and there is that only real curveball of that third summon event uh that could be very uh very juicy in terms of shard efficiency if they cost it similar similar to like their other um hybrid fusions in the past so we will have to see uh, personally i'm just going to slowly uh, work on some of these events um the champion chase i'll probably get close to finishing and then maybe i'll finish it up with a handful of sacreds maybe but i'm probably going to set myself up to participate in the last summon rush we will see Anyways, that's going to be it for the video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Let me know if I missed anything, of course. Uh, let me know what you guys are planning on doing. And uh, yeah, best of luck on the Fusion, of course. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.